Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and for subscribing. And if you're just visiting, please consider subscribing. So today I'm going to share with you my latest haul. Um, it's been probably close to a month and a half since my last haul. So uh, I thought it was time for another one. I have a variety of fragrances here, you know, niche, some affordable fragrances. And this is kind of going to be my last, let's call it summer haul, because a lot of the fragrances here are still probably more suitable for the warm weather. So this is kind of um, the end of <laughs> my summer fragrance purchases. So without wasting any time, let's just start going through. And the first one is from a house that I discovered this year and totally fell in love with. This is the house of Kajal. As you know, I already have Lamar and Dahab and I'm completely crazy about both. And for that reason, I decided to try another fragrance from this house. Uh, this is Kajal Le Parfum. Kajal, I think this is what it's called. And this might have been actually their first release by this house. So it comes in this box. Let's take out the bottle. Um, it, it looks like, you know, the other bottles. Oh, I just lost the cap. Let's put it back on. Um, yeah, so it looks the same shape as the other bottles. Just the juice is purple, beautiful purple color. There you go. So like I said, because I'm crazy the other two, I wanted to try this one. This was a blind buy. So the notes in here are bergamot, orange, lemon, orris, rose, vanilla, musk, amber, sandalwood, and tonka. And this fragrance is interesting. Um, it is definitely very musky. Musk is very strong in here. It is also a little bit powdery. It is a little bit fruity and um, it is kind of a uh, smooth. So I would say Oris is strong here. Musk is strong. Sandalwood is strong here. And there are some uh, citruses that are coming through as well. This is a really, really nice scent, but it's a bit of a miss for me because when I spray it in the air or I spray it on the blotter, I really, really enjoy it. But what I find happens on my skin is that somehow this scent becomes a bit sour, especially in a dry down. There is too much sourness and I'm not sure where it's coming from. Perhaps too much musk is creating that. I am not sure. So I really enjoy it the first few hours that I wear it. But after that, I get quite annoyed with it because of that excessive sourness. So this could be just my skin doing this. I'm not sure. Uh, I really haven't seen a lot of reviews on this, so I'm not sure what others think about this scent. But like I said, this is a bit of a miss. So I'm not sure if this scent is gonna stay in my collection. There is a possibility that I might decide to declutter this. Next one, I'm gonna show you very quickly because I have talked about it in one of the videos already and I couldn't find the box. I don't know, I have it somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So I'm just gonna show you the bottle. This is Keep Glazed from uh, the House of Oud. Like I said, we'll not spend too much time on it. If you're interested in uh, more details, I will link uh, the video where I spoke about it uh, up here. But uh, this is uh, a mango scent. So it has mango, it has iced lemon, strawberry leaf, coconut, ginger, whipped cream, musk, woody notes, fruity notes, etc. And this is such a gorgeous, gorgeous, delicious scent. It, it has mango in it, but it's not, it doesn't smell like, um, let's say mango fruit. It more smells like some kind of mango dessert because, you know, whipped cream in here and it's, it's really there and you have a little bit of even sourness, maybe from lemon, maybe a little bit of sourness from strawberry. I'm not sure, but it's some kind of 
fruity mango dessert. Sweet, delicious, addictive, has an amazing performance, amazing. I've worn it quite a few times already and it performs beautifully. Longevity, projection, everything is top notch. So this has been a great, great purchase. And of course, the bottle is stunning as well. Next fragrance that I'm going to share with you has quite a story. Um, I ordered this scent maybe three, maybe even four months ago. And I ordered it from France because I couldn't find it on any discounter sites. I ordered it from uh, the original site and it got lost somewhere in travel. It was quite an ordeal. I never thought it was going to get to me, really. I lost all hope, kind of forgot about it, and it just arrived on my doorstep literally three or four months after I ordered it. This is, and I'm never going to pronounce the name. Let me try. This is Neroli Blanc Intense. That's the name of the fragrance, and the house is Opaze de la Fleur de Oranger. Something similar to that. I'll put the name on the screen, but here you go. When I was going through my sort of initial obsession with sweet orange blossom scents, kind of um, at the at the end of spring, this is when I ordered this scent because I heard that this is a great orange blossom scent. Like I said, it arrived at the end of the summer, but I'm sure I will use it next year as well. So uh, the box I don't have because it, it probably because I was traveling for three to four months, it kind of got damaged in, a tra in the traveling. So I threw it away. So I don't have the box, but it's a simple white box, but the bottle is quite nice. So what does it smell like? Well, first let's look at the notes. It has orange blossom, mandarin, orange, bergamot, fruits, jasmine, rose, vanilla, sandalwood, cedar, and musk. And this is, you know, the sweet orange blossom scent that I was looking for in a style of many others that uh, we have. Obviously, Love by Killian. I have Sintra from Memo. There is Perdizion from Noble in 1942, etc. There, there are quite a few uh, scents with this uh, profile that we have now. And this one also has the sweet orange blossom, but I would say the sweetness in here is not too strong. It is uh, definitely less sweet than probably the other ones that I mentioned. And it is also a little bit uh, green and maybe uh, slightly uh, citrusy, which adds a bit more freshness and greenness to this scent. It is beautiful, beautiful scent. I really, really like it. it like I said, it's in that style uh, that I was looking for. Is it unique? Well, no, because we have quite a few fragrances, but I really, really like it. It's really nice, but um, you know, this uh, probably was just an um, unlucky draw that it got lost. So I don't want to say anything negative about the company. It's not their fault. They shipped it, um, you know, they shipped it quite quickly after I ordered it, but it just got lost in the mail somewhere. So I would not order for them, from them, nor would I recommend at least uh, ordering to North America. But again, that's purely based on my experience because I waited close to four months to get this and you know this kind of showed up out of nowhere i honestly forgot all about it but i'm really glad to have it it's a beautiful orange blossom scent next fragrance i actually purchased at the very beginning of the summer and i completely forgot about it yes that's what happens when you have too many fragrances i forgot that i had it i forgot to share it in a haul but <laughs> i finally found it again and so i'm gonna share it with you now this was a tester so again i don't have a box and this is from parfums de marley this is cassili so the notes in this fragrance are red currant, floral notes, Bulgarian rose, plum, frangipani, mimosa, pitalia, vanilla, tonka bean, and sandalwood. And this is definitely a bright, sweet, fresh, fruity scent. To me, the main note that I get out of this is melon. This really smells like melon, maybe with addition of some other fruity notes. And 
I think the flower that comes out the strongest in here is frangipani. It has a bit of that um, tropical vibe. So it's a beautiful summer scent. It's inoffensive. It's easygoing. It performs well. I really enjoy it. Too bad I <laughs> forgot about it for a while, but it's been rediscovered and it's now uh, definitely a strong uh, contender in my summer wardrobe. Next, I have a fragrance from a new to me house. I heard about this house uh, quite a while ago, but never had an opportunity to try anything from them. And I finally decided to try one fragrance. The house is Paris Monte Carlo, and the fragrance that I chose is Arancia di Sicilia. So it comes in this box. Um, let's take out the bottle. The bottle is really nice. Here we go. So what is this scent about? So we have here Sicilian orange and citruses, almond, vanilla and cinnamon, coffee, amber and musk. And I was quite intrigued by this fragrance because at first it seems like, you know, you have these um, summer notes, citruses, fruits, um, musk, vanilla okay but then there's an addition of coffee which really intrigued me and that's why i decided to try it so what does it smell like and what do i think about it well to me coffee really doesn't make an appearance here let me spray this a little yes coffee really doesn't make an appearance i don't get any coffee in this fragrance which you know, I have to say it's probably a good thing because I'm not sure how coffee would uh, mix together with these other notes. The opening of this fragrance is very bright, very fresh, very citrusy. I'm definitely getting orange and some other citruses, but orange is really um, stronger than anything else. So it's, it's um sweet citrusy opening. And when it starts drying down, it kind of changes because almond and vanilla are coming out to the forefront much stronger so you're kind of getting that almond maybe even almond milk type of vibe that's a little bit sweet but citruses are still there so you have a nice mix of citruses with this kind of warm nutty slightly sweet almond nothing is too strong nothing is too overpowering all the notes are kind of in moderation and blended beautifully together um this is stunning stunning scent kind of um unique to my collection because yes i have citruses and yes i have you know uh almond centric scents but i don't have anything that mixes these two elements so beautifully together and this one really really does now a performance is, you know, not the best. The longevity is not the best. You know, we're talking about maybe in the area of four hours or so. But, you know, because it's a summery, overall citrusy type of scent, I don't mind. I respray or I overspray. But the scent profile is really beautiful and really unique to me. And this is a great buy. Next on the list is a fragrance from Maison Dior. Uh, I've really been loving this line this year. To me, you know, I kind of discovered this line this year. For a long time, I never was interested in Maison Dior line. I never tried anything from them. And uh, this is my third purchase from this line. And uh, I decided to try Rouge Trafalgar. This was a blind buy, but the notes sounded amazing and that's why I decided to try it. So the bottle looks exactly like all the other Maison Dior bottles. This is 125 ml. So there you go. Beautiful pink juice. So this fragrance has the notes of raspberry, strawberry, cherry, mandarin, orange, grapefruit, blackcurrant, musk, patchouli so you see it's this concoction of different fruits basically mixed together with musk and patchouli and honestly that's exactly what it smells like this is a mix of fruits i'm definitely getting um 
probably raspberry and grapefruit, the strongest out of all the uh, fruity notes listed here, and a little bit of black currant as well. And then everything is sort of uh, swimming together in musk and a little bit of patchouli. This is a beautiful fruity scent that's not overly sweet and not overly pungent. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of um, In Love Again by YSL or Baby Doll by YSL. And I've mentioned that uh, those two are uh, quite similar. And so this one reminds me of those two. It's a beautiful, beautiful, fruity, summery scent. The only downfall with this one is unfortunately the performance pretty poor longevity on me. This is in the area of a couple hours. Okay, maybe three, maybe three hours, you know, three and a half if we are pushing it. So the performance is really poor, which is such a shame because I love the scent, really, really love it. This is right up my alley. This is so inoffensive. This is so easygoing. This would be a great signature scent, great office scent. It's just so mass appealing in, in in my opinion there there is nothing offensive about the scent if only the performance was better but the scent itself is gorgeous next purchase falls under the category of youtube made me buy it totally if it wasn't uh for the influence of other youtubers i don't think i would have ever purchased this fragrance I've heard about it initially months and months ago from Giselle, from GV Fragrances. I think at that time she was the only one talking about this fragrance. No one else was. Recently, I've heard quite a few more people talk about it and more specifically Nisha Spicy Looks purchased it recently and she told me you have to have it. It's such an amazing scent. It's a very affordable scent and she said I have to have it. I mean... Who am I to argue with her, right? If she tells me I need it, then I need it. So I purchased it. So what am I talking about? This is Rare Tiffany from Afnan. Very, very inexpensive fragrance. The presentation is gorgeous. Here's the box and the bottle as well is beautiful. Here we go. Look at the cap. It's very heavy, well done. I mean, like I said, presentation, packaging, everything is gorgeous. Now, what is this fragrance about? So uh, I actually couldn't find the notes on Fragrantica. I don't think this, this uh, fragrance is listed there. So I looked at other sources and I've heard, uh, you know, slightly different note breakdown for this fragrance. I'm going to go with what I found and I can't remember on what website I found it, but you know, there might be a bit of a discrepancy in this description. Although to my nose, the notes that I found sound, uh, sound right, because that's kind of what I'm getting out of this fragrance. So anyways, the notes are rose, jasmine, ylang ylang, sandalwood, vanilla, and musky notes. I've also seen somewhere that this uh, possibly has peony and uh, caramel. Like I said, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure about these notes, but that's what I found. So is this fragrance really amazing? Now, the reason I was always afraid to purchase it is because to me, it looked like it has, um, you know, uh, maybe a bit uh, too much uh, floral notes and especially jasmine, which, you know, I'm not a huge fan of. And that's why I was afraid to purchase it. But, you know, when Nisha said I had to have it, I had to have it, right? So the opening of this fragrance is gorgeous, really, really gorgeous, so beautiful. I get um, freshly cut flowers with some freshness and brightness from citruses. And citruses are not even listed here, but that's kind of what I'm getting. It's a freshly cut bouquet of flowers and it's it's a mixture of flowers where I, I don't know what they are, but they're just so fresh and so beautiful and so appealing. Now, when the fragrance starts um, drying down on my skin, and again, this is because, you know, 
I am not a huge fan of Jasmine and typically the notes that we don't like, they usually stand out to us the most. And that's what happens to me. Jasmine definitely comes out to the forefront. I get Jasmine more than anything else. Now, there is still some other florals in the background. Definitely it's creamy. It still maintains the freshness. There is a little bit of sweetness here. But Jasmine is at the forefront and to my nose, it's a bit too much Jasmine. Again, because I am not a huge fan. Um, and what I would also say is um, the longer I wear it, the more I get very uh, perfumey vibe. I don't know how to explain it, but it, it just smells like perfume, you know? Some fragrances don't have that vibe, and this one really does, with even a touch of powderiness. It, it kind of in a deeper dry down. So, uh, it's a beautiful scent. It really is. It, it is high quality scent, especially for the price. I mean, this is so you know, inexpensive. I paid less than $40 in Canadian dollars. So this is definitely very affordable. And for those of you that are not as scared of Jasmine as maybe I am, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. Uh, for me, like I said, in a dry down, there's a little bit too much Jasmine, but that's because I don't really like it. So I would recommend it. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I really, really love the opening. So, so stunning. I just wish there was a little bit less jasmine and dry down. So we will see if I'm going to keep it, but it's a beautiful, high quality scent with beautiful packaging for a very, very affordable price. And now we're left with two fragrances that are from the same house. And uh, for those of you that have watched my channel for a long time, uh, you might remember a video that I did sometime last year talking about fragrances that I will not purchase. And this house was on that list. Uh, and yes, I changed my mind. I'm entitled to that. And I tend to change my mind quite often. Um, so I did purchase two fragrances from the house called Atar Collection. First one being Hayati. Now, these popped up on my favorite fragrance buy, and I just had to try them again because, you know, again, if you remember from that video, I had this fragrance, but I don't believe that it was authentic, uh, and I just threw it away, so I definitely wanted to try the real one, and yes, I, I can definitely tell the difference. Now, this is real. That one was, unfortunately, uh, fake, so... There you go, it happens. So this is the box, let's open it. Here's the bottle, very nice, kind of, you know, not, not exactly my style, but it's nice, it's high quality. Um, so this is again, Hayati. So the notes in here are uh, berry, fruits, raspberry, pineapple, whipped cream, honey, plum, blackcurrant, floral notes, ice cream, vanilla, white mask. So a lot of notes and uh, the fruity note that stands out to me the most is raspberry. Definitely out of everything, I get raspberry and I get ice cream and I get raspberry ice cream. That's really what I get out of this fragrance. It is uh, sweet. It is a little bit sour. Um, it is very playful. It is very girly. It is very delicious. Um, it's it's a really nice summer fragrance. It is not overly strong. Um, it is kind of on a lighter side. So, you know, for those of you that maybe are um, afraid of really strong, pungent, sweet gourmands, this might be a good option because even though it is sweet, it is definitely sweet, but it's not overly strong. And that's why, you know, you might enjoy this one. So it's a very beautiful kind of fluffy, sweet raspberry ice cream. That's what I get out of it. It's, um, it's really, really nice. It's nothing groundbreaking, but you know, sometimes you want to wear these happy girly fragrances. You don't always want to go for something 
complex and heavy and this is one of those so it's really really nice again this is hayati from atar collection and my second purchase from Atar Collection is the fragrance that I actually wanted to try the most uh, out of uh, out of this house. This is called Halt at Night. So you see the same box, uh, just blue. Uh, I mean, the box is really nice, really heavy, well done, really hard to open, actually. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> so again, the bottle is also the same, just blue. So there you go. So the notes in this one are cherry, cinnamon, vanilla, red apple, patchouli, and musk. And let me start right away with performance actually because it, this one performs much much better than Hayati. It is stronger, it is more uh, potent, it lasts longer, it projects better. This one is a very powerful fragrance. Now what does it smell like? To me this is a mix between Tom Ford uh, Tobacco Vanille and something like Parfums de Marly Au Jean, or, you know, some of the other fragrances that smell similar to that, like Farrah from Bricourt, or I think I have a few others. Anyways, it's the combination of these two. So it kind of has that smoky, slight tobacco with um, cherry vibe, but then it also has... Um, a little bit uh, of spiciness and sweetness and kind of cinnamon that's sort of coming from um, something like Ojan from Parfums de Marly. And that's why, to me, it's a blend of these two fragrances. That's what I get out of it. Um, so it is a beautiful scent. It performs beautifully. Is it unique? Not exactly, because it is similar to quite a few other fragrances or more like combination of a few fragrances. So, uh, you know, it depends if you need this or not, but it's a beautiful, beautiful scent. I haven't had a chance to wear it too much because to me, this is really a winter scent. This is not for hot weather. This is for colder weather. So I have tested it a few times, but I haven't really worn it, but I'm definitely looking forward to wearing it um, in the cold weather. I mean, once the fall hits, I think this will be appropriate. So there you go. This was the last fragrance in my haul. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me thumbs up and subscribe. And I would love to know what have you purchased lately. Definitely let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. I will see you soon in my next video. Bye.